So this question looks like it's going to be a simplify question. However, I do, when I glance at it, I do see these two equations. So this might also end up being a system of equations. I'll just write that as SOE, system of equations question. But let's read it and see exactly what we need to do here. So the question says x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. In the given equation, b and c are constants. If that first equation equals, or sorry, if this first equation here, and the second equation here, um, what is one possible value of x? Well, x is only here. The only way I'm going to solve for x is, first of all, by plugging in or knowing or solving for b and for c. I need to use these two equations that are here to solve for b and c. So I think I'm right about the system of equations. So I'm going to write the first equation that's provided here, negative b plus square root b squared minus 4c equals 18. I'm going to write the second equation right beneath it. Negative b minus square root b squared minus 4c equals 10. Now, why did I think to do, th do this? Well, because two equations are provided, right? So usually on this test, when two equations are provided for you, it is a system of equations. I can't think of a single example out of the thousands of questions that I've seen and done for this test where two equations are provided and you're not going to use a system of equations. So this is just from experience. So now that I've set them up as a system of equations, I'm going to just add the bottom equation to the top equation. So in doing that, I get negative 2b. My b squared minus 4c will cross out because I have a positive on top and a negative on bottom. And then 18 plus 10 is 28. I'm going to divide both sides by negative, I'm sorry, just negative 2, not negative 2b. So negative 2b, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. And what I'm left with there is that b is equal to negative 14. So I have one of my constants. Now I have to find my c value. So I'm going to take this negative 14 and plug it back into this top equation there by saying I have negative, replace b with negative 14, plus the square root of negative 14 squared minus 4c is equal to 18. So this becomes positive 14 plus 14 squared is 196. So it becomes 196 minus 4c equals 18. Subtract 14 from both sides here. So that's gone there. And I'm left with radical 196 minus 4c is equal to 4. The next step in simplification would be to square both sides here to get rid of the radical. So in squaring that, the radical is now gone. And I just have 196 minus 4c is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. Subtract 196 from both sides, right? So a lot of math here. And I'm left with negative 4c equals negative 180. Divide both sides by negative 4. And I'm left with c is equal to, what is it? It is going to be equal to 45. And again, uh, please do not hesitate to show your work if, um, if you need to. Um, and make sure that you're getting the calculations correct here. So I have a c value now. I have a b value now, which means now I'm ready to actually go on and solve x, right? So taking this, I'm going to move it up for space. I'd have x squared minus 14x plus 45 equals 0, right? Because I figured out what b is, negative 14, and I figured out what c is, positive 45. So I'm looking for two factors of 45. So two numbers that multiply to equal 45 but add up to negative 14. That's how I factor a trinomial. Those two values are negative 9 and negative 5. So I'd have x minus 9, x minus 5 equals 0. And when I set each of those individually equal to 0, I get x equals 9 as a solution, and I get x equals 5 as a solution. The question asks, what is one possible value of x? Well, that means that either 5 would be correct or 9 would be correct 
Either one of those will give you the correct answer here. 